Welcome to our look at Space Base, a dice-driven sci-fi engine builder from AEG. Here's where I would usually point out that we got a review copy of this game from the publisher, but that's not the case this time. No, oh, that's right. This one comes from my own personal game collection. Though I gotta say, hey, AEG, if you're listening, if you want to work with us in the future, I'm cool with that. Indeed, especially with all the great future content, you're undoubtedly percolating <laughs> working with Jay and Sen in your design forum pitch project event. Now, Space Base was designed by John D. Clare and features artwork from Chris Walton. It was published in North America by AEG, um, also known as Alderic Entertainment Group. First came out in 2018. Plays two to five players with games taking about an average of an hour. Though I got to say that's very dependent on player count and player experience and AP. So it can range. We have seen some longer games. Space Base has an MSRP of $39.99 US, but can often be found for less than that. And while it's tempting to think of this as a sci-fi version of Kingdoms of Valeria, you shouldn't. While there are some vague similarities, it really is its own game and should be judged on its own merits, and we'll get more into this later. Yeah, people also like to compare this one to Machi Koro, and to be honest, once we get to the end of the review, I am going to spend some time comparing those three games. Now, in Space Base, you are a Commodore in command of a small fleet of ships in a race to 40 victory points. Now, these ships begin docked at your Space Base. Each turn, the dice are rolled, and all players will generate resources in the form of credits, income, and victory points. The active player will then purchase either one ship or one colony. Newly purchased ship or colony will replace a ship that was docked with the replaced ship being deployed. Deployed ships generate resources on other players' turns. Due to this resource generation mechanism, Space Base keeps players engaged, watching, and counting on each roll of the dice. For a look at what you get in the box for Space Base, be sure to check out our Space Base unboxing on YouTube. Now, Space Base comes in a fairly small box that contains a surprisingly thick rulebook over a plastic box insert that holds the rest of the components and keeps them all nice and separate. Actually, a really solid insert. Now, the rules are a whopping 32 pages long. You don't expect that from a game in a box this small, but only 16, half of those are actual rules, which is still a lot for what's really not that complicated a game. Now, a large portion of the rulebook is for reference. And there's also a ton of fluff and background information, which is surprising to me for a game that at its core is really an abstract strategy game. Now, along with this book, you do get five very large and long player boards, two six-sided dice that feature a rocket on one side, on the one side, uh, 45 plastic cubes, and 204 cards. Now, there is a set of starting cards for each player, plus three different decks of market cards, marked one, two, three, a set of colony cards, and a start player cards. Now, all of these cards are a rather odd, unique size. Now, I didn't measure it, but they appear to be about half the width of a standard playing card, but I didn't actually like, put them on a playing card to see if they are half. Uh, overall, component quality is excellent. I Honestly, no complaints. Every, everything's decent. Nothing really wowed me, but nothing wrong at all. As Mo said, while the quality is great, the size of the cards, while important to be that size, mm. is weird and takes a beat to get used to. Yes. <laughs> well, now that we know what you get with a copy of Space Space, how does it play? So a game starts with each player taking one of those player boards and a set of starter cards. The player board has spots for 12 ships, and you're going to put one spot, one ship in each spot, and they're assigned 1 through 12. A central market is built using six face-up cards from each of the decks, with the decks placed there to refill the market as a game plays. Colony cards are also played face-up in numeric order. Players then take three color-coded resource cubes and mark their sorting resources on their board, which for every player starts at five credits, zero income, and zero points. So the market setup feels remarkably uh, familiar actually to Splendor, despite the fact that we talk about, you know, Valeria and, and, yes. and Machikoro in there. Now to determine the start player, each player draws a random card from the one market deck. They pay for this card out of their starting credits and place it in the appropriate slot on their board, deploying the ship that was already there. Now, I said deploying a couple times, so I'm going to explain what that is because it's going to come up. Deploying a ship means taking the card off the player board, flipping it 180 degrees, not over, 180 degrees, so it's upside down, and sliding it under the top of the board so you can only see the, the red portion of it. 
Now, the player whose new ship that they just drew is in the highest slot from one to 12 becomes the start player with a roll of the dice breaking any tie. An actual game mechanic way of choosing start player and not some vague thing about which player last looked up into the stars <laughs> or some garbage. Yes, Sean is a stickler when it comes to start player rules. But this is a game where I did not go grab Schwazi, so good work on that AEG. Now, each turn of Space Base starts with the active player rolling the two six-sided dice. Then everyone, not just the active player, will activate ships based on the numbers rolled. Now, after each roll, players will look at their, their board, their ships, and decide if they want to use both dice separately, so each number separately, or the sum of the two dice. They're then going to activate the appropriate ships. The active player will activate their docked ships, whereas all the other players get to activate their deployed ships. This is where I actually made a mistake in the first round or two. It's not one of the dice or the two dice combined. It's two separate dice or yes. the two combined dice. Yeah, and I didn't notice you were making that mistake when we played, so I do apologize for that. Now, many of the ships, including all the 12 starter ships, generate one or more of the three resources, either currency, income, or points. Other ships feature all kinds of special actions, which I'm not going to get into here, but include things like letting you shift your dice to the right, which generally are better cards, allowing for re-rolls, getting to draft cards for free, and so on. Now, some of these abilities also require collecting charge cubes on the cards. Now, I don't think it's worth getting into the full details here, but I will say the charge cube mechanic is the most confusing part of the rules and a little fiddly and worth reading over a couple times or maybe sitting down to watch a video on how to play to make sure you've got it down before you start playing. Yeah, the cube-based actions are the one part of the iconography that is letting the game down to me. Mm -hmm. It makes sense once you know it, but it isn't easily instantly identifiable uh, yeah. Generally, otherwise, the iconography is very obvious as to what is what. Yeah, I'll get into uh, to a bit more on that when I get to my final thoughts later. But just for now, no, read over those rules a couple times before you play the first time. Now, after activating your ship or ships, you then get to purchase one card from the market. Now, we mentioned earlier the market's broken up into three areas divided by card cost, with the one cards being cheaper than the three cards. You pay the cost of the card, which you pay in credits, and you lose any leftover credits after the purchase is lost. Now, interestingly, your credit doesn't reset to zero, but down to your income level. So generating up your income level starts you with credits every round, which is could be really powerful. You're now going to place your new card onto your playboard and deploy that ship, which is that thing where you flip it and tuck it. Now, as you're reaching into the market or tucking a card, this is where the one major drawback to the game components in this game emerges the player boards and cube tracks it is almost mm -hmm. unthinkable that you won't at least once knock your cubes and need to think about where they should go back to and that's if you're lucky enough to only do it once yeah so far unfortunately the only upgrades for that are third-party uh, products on etsy yeah, this is one of those games where you don't want to put your board too close to the edge because you're going to catch it with a sleeve or something and you don't want it too close to where everyone's reaching in. I got to admit, I would have loved some type of double layered boards or some type of overlay. Um, we have been looking at purchasing one ourselves. So yeah, that is, that is a definite downfall to this system. Now, instead of purchasing a ship on your turn, you also have the option to instead found a colony. Now, each game, there are 12 colonies in play. Every game, there are always 12 colonies. And each corresponds to a different spot on your player board. What these do is when you buy them, you get instant victory points. Just bang, points. But then they take up that spot. You can't purchase a ship with the same number. You can't replace it. And it also generates no resources on your turn. Though that spot will still generate if you have any ships deployed, which you'd have to have at least one if you bought a colony. That's pretty much it. Play continues going around the table until one or more players reach 40 points. You then complete the existing round so all players have an equal number of turns and the players with the most points wins. So now that we know uh, what to play, what are your thoughts on this uh, sci-fi engine builder? So Space Base is one of those rare games that just feels right. 
I, like right from the moment you start playing it, from the moment you sit down and you draw that first card from the one deck and you dock it in your station and deploy the other one by flipping it around to the closing rounds of the game where everyone's scrambling to do what they can to squeeze in just a few more points and maybe get past that 40 mark. It just, the game overall just feels very tight and polished. Uh, until you run into your first cube action card uh, or your charge uh, action, it just flows. Things are obvious. And the table will get into a rhythm, including even how you call out the dice mm -hmm. that are rolled to make it easier for everyone to decide on their activations and not slow down by trying to figure out what, oh, what did you roll? No, you just, you roll the dice and you say, uh, two, three, five. Yeah, um, that, that's definitely, for me, that's something I carried over from Valeria. That's how I always read the dice out in Valeria. I read the individual numbers in the total. So you got three, three, six. And then everyone after a while doesn't even have to look at the dice. Now, some of the things I really love about this game that make it work, make it so good, um, is the fact you're always engaged, even on other players' turns. This isn't a game where you finish your turn and then you can lose focus, grab your phone, leave, whatever, space out. You want to know what numbers are being rolled every turn, hoping for just the right numbers to come up so that you score big or you're able to make a big move once the dice get back to you. Yeah, and one thing we did discover is that it is possible to have a runaway leader. Now, I can't say how much of that was suboptimal play on our side mm -hmm. versus excellent play with a touch of luck on D's side, but it was clear well before the game was over that we weren't going to defeat D. Yeah. Uh, now, more plays at a variety of player counts could help determine if, as I kind of expect, that was just a confluence of events that happened rather than an actual game balance problem. So I don't think it was. Plus, because of the way the game works, it, it still would have been possible for one of us to win. If we had rolled more five, six, 11s, he would have generated nothing every turn. If that just kept happening multiple turns in a row, now the odds of rolling five, six, or an 11, and for anyone knows it, knows that's not the highest possibility, but it is still possible. So like, yes, you can have someone, if someone gets a good engine for generating points, it can be difficult to surpass that. Now, another thing I really like in this game, especially when compared to the other games that, uh, that are similar to this, is that you start with a full tableau. This is a huge difference from Valeria Card Kingdoms, where you start with only two cards in play and thus only have a small set of numbers that generate resources. In Space Base, when it's your turn, you always get something. You're going to get one thing or two things on either each individual die and the four the total. Then once you start deploying ships, if you're smart, you should be able to set it up. So you're going to get something on everyone else's turn as well. The key being, if you are smart, remembering yes. that it's not a pure bell curve because of the option to pick two separate dice or combined value is an important detail. Yeah, and that's my next thing I love about this game, actually, is the way the dice are used. This is, again, different from Valeria and Machi Koro. Most of these... Uh, most of us gamers know 2d6 bell curve, right? Like some point we taught it, we learned it. We know that seven is the most common number rolled on 2d6. We either took it in school or someone told us that. But that's only true if you're adding the dice together. In space space, the number that will actually come up the most often is six. Due to the fact you can not only roll six on each of the dice, but there are a number of dice combinations that add to six, like one and five and four and two and so on and three and three. I like that change in probabilities. Along with this, I also like the way they balance the cards with ships in the higher numbers offering better rewards than ships in the lower numbers. This combines into a neat way especially with powers that let you swap your cards. There's a number of things that can go in where you can swap your, your 11 spot with your two spot. Well, your 11 card generally is huge because 11 doesn't come up as often as two. And being able to swap them can be really powerful. Yeah, while not vital, familiarity with the cards, at least in general and the different power sets that are available, will certainly help you make choices early in the game yeah. so that you can maximize later. And I think that was definitely one thing that I was missing early game was a better understanding of where I could go. And then that's mm -hmm. my fault because again, you do start with those three tiers out there. I should have spent more time looking at them. Well, yeah, and seeing planning ahead. Part of it too is it was a learning game for you. So I didn't want to flood you with all the possible card powers, whereas the one row was pretty simple, most of them. Yeah. And the other thing too is a lot of people don't realize how important it is to be able to shift your dice to the right, how, how powerful that can be, especially when you get multiple cards that let you shift multiple times. Now, my biggest complaint about Space Base is in regards to learning the game. 
Uh, for one, the rulebook's a beast. Like, it, it's 32 pages. You don't need 32 pages for this game. Now, a large part of the book is stuff you don't need to know to play. Like, it just kind of, like, muddies it. Now, I think this might come from the fact that Aldrich is actually a company that launched by making D20 D&D RPG modules back in the day. That's what got their start. But there's, like, a ton of background information here. Like, all the different ship types and what role they play in the Navy and what's going on and what a Commodore is. And, like, none of this. Like, like I get wanting theme in your game, but, like, none of that matters. Second is that whole charge cube system. Sean's mentioned it a few times here. Well, it's not like that complicated. It's not like a heavy game. It's not hard. It's just not as intuitive as the rest of the game. And what I find is it breaks the flow. Like Sean said, you go around, nice quick, roll the dice, get your stuff, buy a card, roll the dice, put your stuff, buy a card, roll the dice, buy your stuff, get your card, roll the dice, buy a thing, now get two extra things, now swap two cards. Like it just, it, it breaks that flow. Like that, being able to draft multiple cards in a turn. There's one out there that lets you draft two cards and then purchase again. Or getting to shop even more than once does it. Like get five extra credits and shop again. It just, it adds more AP and it messes up that flow. And then there's the added confusion that many of the charge cubes need different numbers of cubes, the charge cube based powers based on the number of players. And it's just something else. It's like a small little thing on the card that you got to kind of, you know, squint to look at and figure out like, wait, how many players do we have this game? Like I know now two players, you use all the cubes everywhere. So that's stuck in my head, which I like, but once you're in three or four players, like, wait, does that have a three or four dots on it? It's just a little more fiddly than I would have liked with the rest of the game being so elegant. Yeah, I, I admit I tended to avoid those charge ba uh, charge cube cards until la very late in the game, probably to the detriment of my play, simply because I just didn't want another thing to learn as I was playing. Yeah, which is totally fair. I almost wonder if you could thin out the deck the first play and just take them all out, if that would, would work, like if there'd still be enough. Now, the other issue Space Base suffers from is how much space it takes up. This is due to the fact the player boards have to be able to hold 12 cards each with some room in between, like some wiggle room and the resource tracker is going all the way from one to 40. Now, this is the reason you have half size cards. So we are kind of complaining about the card size, but now it makes sense because I can only imagine how big those player boards would be if they had full size cards. So I get it. But even with the tiny cards, this game takes up a lot of room. Now, we ran into an added issue due to the long boards is that using a non-square table, uh, it's pretty much impossible to fit four or five players in a position where they can all see and reach the market in order to play space space on a larger size rectangular gaming table, which happens to be what I have in my game room. Yeah, in addition to uh, a layered cube track on your player board, a, a some other uh, way of displaying the market, maybe a vertical card system on a Lazy Susan would help. Uh, but uh, without uh, some sort of upgrades, it's certainly tough to manage at any player count above three or four without, uh, you know, a table that's going to get people close enough without bumping into right. each other and able to see and reach that market in the middle. Like, I personally think it probably perfect for playing at a poker table right your usual hexagonal table or even the kind of round blackjack tables probably work great my big eight by four boardroom table it just doesn't work we actually when playing four players play at our kitchen table because it's actually a little bit more accessible squeezing in a fifth player though would be difficult now speaking of numbers of players the other issue some groups may have with this game is how different the game plays at different player counts like i'll admit that it feels like, almost like you're playing a different game at two players as it does with four. The number of players to act between your turns greatly impacts the power of your deployed ships and the number of credits you're going to generate passively between turns. Like it just changes the scale. So when there's more players, when it gets to your turn, you're buying bigger cards, which changes the whole feel of the game. Now, personally, so far, I have enjoyed the game most with three players, but I liked it at every player count. I wouldn't turn down a game at any other player count. It's not like I'll only play this at three or it's terrible at two. I just have to say that some people may not enjoy it at different player counts. And I think you're going to have a swing. You're going to have people who love it at two and you're going to have people who love it with as many players as possible. Yeah, it's you can potentially generate a lot more income for every additional player added, which really ratchets things yeah. up that much more quickly. 
And I am going to address one other thing. I have to thank Red Meeple Ryan in our chat room for this is due to the heavy use of symbols that are not described in the PDF rule book. It's not accessible enough for a blind player to learn the game from the rules to be able to teach it to other players. So that is something KEG, if you're listening to, you may want to put a better icon reference somewhere in your rule book. Instead, what they do is they show pictures of cards and then a full description of what that card does. And that is a majority of that rule book. So there is there is an issue definitely there for people with vision impairment. Right. Now, overall, I've been really enjoying Space Base. Uh, my entire family digs it. Um, one of the kids, not as much as the other one, but everyone I've taught the game to, which I'll admit it's COVID, it hasn't been a lot of people, but they've all really enjoyed it. There's still a lot of buzz out there for this game. And I got to admit, you almost never hear anything negative about this game. And I think that's for a good reason. This is a very tight and polished game. While the use of charge cubes could be a bit fiddly, the game overall is just very elegant and flows well. Since getting Space Base for my birthday this year, it has become one of my favorite board games of all time. When we redo our top 25 games, top 50 games, it'll be interesting to see exactly where it falls, but it's definitely up there. If you dig dice-driven engine builders, you probably already own Space Base. But if not, go out and pick this up. If you dig sci-fi themed games, despite really being an abstract engine builder, I think there's enough theme here for you to enjoy Space Base. Now, if you do prefer perfect information games with low randomness, this one may not be there for you. This is a dice-driven game with a market that's going to shift a lot in between turns. But I do recommend giving it a shot. This might be the one dice-based game that wins you over. Now, normally we would stop our review here, but because so many people want to lump Space Base in with Valeria Card Kingdoms and Machi Machikoro, how about a comparison between those three games? All right, so due to the fact Space Base, Machikoro, and Valeria all use a very similar system of rolling D6 dice, using the results to compare to a tableau to generate stuff, both on your turn and your opponent's turn, people can't help but compare them. The thing is, I don't find these games all that similar. While they do share a similar core mechanic, the actual feel of each game at the table is very unique. And I'm not just talking about themes like, yeah, one's fantasy and one's modern building cities and Sim City and what. No, that, that's not what I'm talking about. That does have some impact, but it's just the feel of the mechanics, how they interact and the amount of player interaction is very different in these three role for resource based games. Honestly, starting right from the core mechanic, even that dice mechanic is actually different and changes the feel. In Valeria, you get to use the rolls on each D6 and the total. Whereas Space Base, you have to pick, do I use the two D6s or the total? And then Machi Koro, you choose how many dice to roll and you have to use the total. You don't get to use individual dice. That alone totally changes the probability curves in all three games. And that's a big part of what makes each game feel unique. Yeah, just like we were saying uh, earlier in the show, just because you're rolling two dice in two different games does not mean the probabilities are set in stone. And it's clear the designers took the specific maths in space space mm -hmm. into account in a number of ways in their design. Now, of the three games, Machi Koro is the most stab you in the back, competitive, in your face game with a large amount of take that element. Like the entire set of purple cards in Machi Koro are designed to penalize your opponents. And we also found at Machi Koro that money is just flying everywhere. It's bouncing back. You earn a bunch on your turn, then someone steals a bunch of it, and then I buy a card, I save up all this money to buy something, and then someone steals half my money and so on. It's just flying everywhere. It's more chaotic. Now, Valeria also includes Take That Elements, though it does depend on which heroes you use. You can remove all the Take That cards, or you can play with all Take That cards. There are a number of cards that let you steal cards and resources from other players. Now, compared to both of those, Space Base is downright friendly. It's, it's honestly mostly multiplayer solitaire, except for the fact you're probably going to want to hate draft, and there can be some competition over the colony cards. Now, there is one take that card included in the core game, and it's interesting because the use of that card is hotly debated online with many groups removing it from the game just because it feels it doesn't fit, which I totally understand. In our game, more hate drafting probably actually yeah. would have helped us out. 
but it certainly didn't feel antagonistic. No. More like, you know, three empires all working to fill up the universe, and one was just going to be more successful at doing that. And that's another change between the two. Well, no, Machi Corps is the same. It's, it's definitely a race. It's a race to those 40 points. It, it's not a, a um, beat up your neighbors or try to win the empire kind of game. Now, thematically, I did say that while the themes don't separate the games that much, they do matter. Space Base to me is, is, is somewhat thematic. It's kind of in the middle. Machi Coral to me felt abstract, completely abstract. I had no inclination that I was building up a city. I was just drafting cards, rolling dice, and drafting more cards. Whereas Valeria, I actually find quite thematic from having different types of heroes and building a party and going on adventures and picking which dungeon to explore and killing monsters to eventually building up enough income and money to found strongholds. Like to me, that really feels like old school D and D vibe to me. Like it just has that feel of like you start off weak and you build a big party and the whole founding strongholds was just such a big aspect of old school D and D. Now space base manages to feel somewhat thematic. I like I really liked the the mechanic of purchase dock and deploy like it just kind of makes sense it fits thematically I'm buying a ship it's docking at my space station well it's there it generates stuff on my turn because it's my station and then it eventually they leave the dock and go out into space and now it generates stuff on other players turn like that just kind of fits and honestly the theme doesn't get in the way it's it's just there yeah I would say despite the rule books flourish of background it yes. does lean more towards the themeless machi coral but again, mm. not in a bad way. It's a sci-fi game. You don't need it dripping with theme and story in every action. Uh, that really does lend itself more toward the fantasy uh, mm. concepts. Uh, whereas, again, you know, sci-fi tends to be a little more stark anyway. Yeah. Now, another aspect that feels very different is the handling of resources. Machi Koro has one resource, coins, which are going to come and go and get passed all over the place chaotically. Space Base features currency that needs to be regenerated every turn, but that can be improved through upping your income, which can't be stolen by any other players. Valeria, on the other hand, is actually a game about having piles and piles of three different resources. So many that there are times five and times 10 counters included in the base game because you won't have enough counters to keep track. And you can buy individual counter packs separately to add to your game if you don't want to use those. Now, where Space Base and Machi can be about scarcity at the beginning of the game, Valeria is all about hoarding. Now, another aspect that just got brought up in our chat room that I think is really good to point out to is Valeria of the three games is the only one with a static market. So that's more like a dominion. You put out what heroes are out at the beginning of the game and they stay there and your dungeon decks are the same. The only thing that's randomized are the kingdom cards that come up. So that is a big change between that one. In that case, Space Base and Valeria are very similar with that Splendor-like market where you have, or Gizmos uses the same thing, where you have different tiers, and when you purchase a card, you replace it from a new one on the deck. Now, all of these things, to me, make for three very different feeling games that just happen to use some similar but not identical mechanics. And no crazy grammatically questionable end game scoring in Space Base compared to Valeria. Yeah, Sean did not like the end game scoring for adding up resources. And the only reason we know is the designer told us how to read the cards properly. So yes, that is a bit of a failure of the game. Now, I'm sure everyone wants to know, what, what's my favorite, right? So of the three, I love Valeria Card Kingdoms. I don't expect that to change. I, I think that is a fantastic game. I love the theme. I have almost all the expansions except for the latest kickstarter i love exploring new dungeons and throwing new monsters in and trying out different combinations of heroes and there is a way to play if you own multiple heroes to shuffle the decks together so you have different numbers in so you do have that variable market but i also really like space base it's just not quite there now based on some of the hype i've been seeing in regards to the expansions i have a feeling there might be a chance that space base will just step past valeria for me but it's not there with the base box. It's just almost there. Maybe with the expansions, I'm, I'm going to put it above, but we'll have to see when we get to those. Now, as for Machi Koro, I'll admit it. I don't actually enjoy it. I did not have fun playing Machi Koro. I didn't like that one at all. It was far too random and way too cutthroat for our taste. Too much stuff just passing around, and when you feel like you're building up an engine, someone screws you over, and I did not enjoy that. 
Now, as for you, I, I would recommend doing what I did and try all three if you can. Go to a local game store, go to a cafe when it's safe, and, and try to try all three of the games. Then you can decide which game's best for your group. Heck, you might like all three and own them all. I will say none of these games have killed the others for me. I, in no way did Space Base kill Valeria. I am very happy to own both. And I'm glad I got to try Machi Koro, but I didn't buy that myself. I got to try someone else's copy, and it's just not one for me. Well, that's it for our look at Space Base. I invite you to read more about this game in the review section of the blog over at tabletopbellhop.com.